that's fascinating. Um, but the study of relics is really interesting, you know. I've been studying also on the relics the study of, of what? Uh, relics, relics, Rel relics. Relics, yes. You can type uh, another f patient that I had is uh, Saint Madeleine, Holy Magdalena. Holy Magdalena. You see what who she Holy is? Holy Magdalene? Yes, Holy Magdalene. Yes. Not Mary Magdalene. You see? Yes. Oh, uh, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Oh, yes. really? Yes, yes, yes. Mary Magdalene. Well, she's one of my patients. There is a there is a story in France. We say that um, at the beginning of the attack of Christians, a boat um, started from Palestine at this period, mm -hmm. and on this boat there was Mary, Mary Magdalene, mm -hmm. Mary Salome, Mary Jacobé, Mary Sarah, Lazarus. Um, yes. and others. I don't remember all of them, but okay. there were many. Then the boat came to Cyprus, to Creta, to Malta, to many uh, islands, then arrived in Provence, in the south of France, mm -hmm. in a small city which is called now Les Saintes Marie de la Mer. Anyway, if we, everyone uh, escaped and Marie Magdalene went to a cave she spent 33 years in the cave. Then after this period, she get out of the cave and she died and she was buried in a place which is now a basilica in, uh, what the name in France, it's uh, uh, Saint Maximin, la Sainte Baume. Anyway, it's a huge basilica from the Middle Ages. And inside the basilica, you've got the bones and the skull of Maria Magdalena. So we did the examination of these relics. Maybe you can see, you can you can find them also. And <coughs> relics. Uh, where is, where are the bones and the remains of Mary Magdalene right now? Still there. They're still, still there. there. Yes. Ah, this is it. The first picture is mine. What? Oh, that's for real. Yes. How have I never seen this? That looks so badass. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to come to France. That's all. So this is my patient. This is my picture. It yeah. looks like a a golden astronaut helmet with hair <laughs> with Mary Magdalene's skull in the middle of it. It's a reliquary, in fact, and you can see that the most important part of it, which is the face, is still missing. It looks like the cover of a death metal album. <laughs> It may, <laughs> it may, yes. So we did the examination of it and we were able to reconstruct the face based upon the surface of the skull. And if you type facial reconstruction, Mary Magdalene, you mm -hmm. will see the face that we reconstructed because this skull is the skull of a woman of almost 50 years old. And you know, there is now a methodology very well practiced uh, in forensic anthropology, it's the, the reconstruction of face. We saw it with Cro-Magnon skull. Yes. On the surface of the skull, you put um, sticks um, using your computer, mm -hmm. uh, which represent the common uh, thickness uh, at the level of the face with muscles, with fatty tissue yeah. and skin. Okay. okay. So it gives you really the, the, the surface of the, of the skull, which is the face. And here we had also fragments of the hairs, fragments also of the skin. So we were able to be much more precise than Cro-Magnon that you saw before. Mm -hmm. And you, you will see the, the reconstruction. Did you find it, Steve? Yeah, facial reconstruction. Facial, facial. Oh, not, not oh look, look at the bigger one, the bigger image. Yes. And look, it's like little angels or cherubs yeah. or something like holding uh, her up. Yes. And oh, it, wow. And wait a minute. Here, you've got the skin fragment. The skin fragments are here. Zoom in. Zoom in on the skin fragment. Dude, this is gnarly. I've never seen this, dude. The skin fragments, because when the... That's, that's, that's almost like, it's pretty terrifying. No, not at all. Because you're not forensic practitioner. Maybe. No, for me it's terrifying, right? <laughs> no, yeah, I've never, no, no. I haven't. No, it's, it's zoom out. And these fragments of skin come from the forehead. Just because the, the symbolism of it, and the fact that they have this ancient human skull in inside of a trophy, a golden trophy with angels. It's like. I have to tell you the story of the skin fragments. Yes, please. Initially, they were put here at the level of the left for the right forehead. Mm -hmm. The story is that one. Uh, during the patient, Jesus 
escape from the grave, as you as you know, because he was resuscita resuscitated. Okay, and Maria Magdalena was here, and she was trying to catch Jesus, and Jesus stopped her. May I do it mm -hmm. this way? So stopping her with two. Fingers two fingers on her forehead. On the forehead, saying in Aramean, but I translate into English for into in Aramaic. Yeah, in yes, this was his speaking Aramaic. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Aramaean, yes, uh, and um, I translate it into Latin for you if mm -hmm. you want. Noli me tangere, which means don't touch me. So it's really it's a very important part of the of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these are the two fragments of the skin which has been touched by the Christ on the forehead of Maria Magdalena. And we also have a stick of hairs from Maria Magdalena because later, still after the patient, she um, cleaned the foot of Jesus using her long hairs. She did what was she? She cleaned. She she cleaned the 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 feet. The feet. She yeah. cleaned his feet. Yes, the feet of Jesus using her long hairs. Wow. Okay. While so, they were still on her head. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so that had to were, be awkward. So they were conserved in another reliquary. So I studied the the skin, the hairs, and the skull too, and we were able to produce a facial reconstruction of the face of this individual. This is it. The second one. That one. Oh, wow. This is her. This is the face from the skull. I cannot tell you that this face is the true face of Maria Magdalena because mm -hmm. we are still missing carbon dating on genetic, but this is the face of the skull presented as the one of Maria Magdalena. So, so, so we don't know for sure if that skull was the Mary Magdalene that's talked about in the Bible. Exact. But we do know that that skull was from the first century AD. No, we know that this skull is uh, the one conserved and presented since the medieval period, the Middle Ages, as mm -hmm. the one of Maria Magdalena in this tradition. But we, so you... I don't have carbon dating, so... You don't have carbon dating of the skull, got I, it. Unfortunately, no. Well, go back, Steve, go back to that, where, where they were showing the 3D renderings. Oh, wow. That's how they built it. Is there, what is the difference in the skulls of males versus females? There is not a huge difference, in fact, because if no? you want to make a sex determination using mm -hmm. a skull, it's really not the perfect bone. The, the most accurate bone is the pelvis. Pelvis, you've got 98% of giving the of chance of giving the, the correct sex for this individual. Mm -hmm. If you use the skull, for example, my skull is a female skull. Okay, but if you look at my pelvis, you will be sure that I'm really a male. Okay, because looking at the skull, it gives you maybe 55 to 65 percent of chance of giving the true sex. So it's not, it's really not perfect. What are they like wider, like birth bearing hips? Yes, it's. In fact, the, the pelvis is much more uh, induced by in its morphology by um, um, hormones. Much more than uh, than the skull, you see what I mean? I say it again. Yes. Um, sex hormones. Hormones. Yes. yes sex it. hormones mm -hmm. are much more involved in the morphology of the pelvic bones uh, than the skull. So uh, if you look at the sense. if you look at the skull, it's not the perfect one to be sure. Sometimes you've got a very male one. Sometimes a very female one. Then you can be almost sure. But in most of the case, you've got a mm -hmm. almost male, almost female. So making a sex diagnosis based only on the skull, it's not the best way to do it. Okay. That's why we always pre prefer to do it on genetic uh, samples, so DNA. And why won't they, so they, they're not letting you take a carbon date of that skull? The authorization of opening of the of the recreary was on the office of Pope Francis. So. As you know, he passed away. No. He, no, he passed away. <laughs> he passed away. So we have to, to wait for the new Pope, so, so which Leo. is American. Leo, Pope Leo. He's American? Yes. He's, he's from your country. Really? I yes. didn't even know that. Please. <laughs> Pope Leo. 
Pope Leo's American. Yes, yeah, so from so the So are US. you going to ask from him the if, you US. Can, if you guys can pop open that uh, astronaut helmet and see if that she if that's actually Mary Magdalene? We would write to him, and then we would see. 